Well, good morning. morning. Tell you a story. Her, Her name was Bessie. It's a 1977 Ford Courier, and that's what I learned to drive on. Stick shift. How many of you remember stick shift? Ooh, this, I'm at the right service this morning. <laughs> stick shift, and uh, I was 14 years old, and Dad was uh, on the first time. He was in the passenger seat. The times before, I'd sit in his lap, and uh, we would drive down the road, uh, some back road, and he was teaching me to drive. And I was smiling from ear to ear because it was my time now to be in the driver's seat at 14 years old. I'd just gotten my permit, and after getting my permit, I was excited to be in there. And so I had to learn on the stick shift. And that 1974 Ford Courier, and my dad sit there, and he looked at me, and he said, Chris, listen to me. I need you to listen to me. Um, I'm thinking about that. I'm actually looking at Ethan, because I know at some point he'll be driving, and so we have to, we got to, got to focus on, on, on the voice of the father. And so he said, listen to me. He goes, I want you, and I tell you to, to ease off the clutch. I want you to ease off of it and take your time. It's going to be all right. And I was like, why are you putting your seatbelt on? And <clears throat> for precautions, just putting my seatbelt on. Like, you never wear your seatbelt. He goes, I'm just, just, just ease up, get ready to ease off the clutch. And so I did. I tried to ease off the clutch, and you know what happened? It died. And he goes, let's try it again. Start it up. And he goes, I want you to give it a little gas this time and just ease off of the clutch. Please just ease off the clutch. And so I did. Try to do it again. It died. I'm telling you, we did that for about four or five times. And then, not only that, but it would, I would get it going, and then it would do that, do that jerking like somebody that just got hit with the Spirit of God. You know what I'm saying? They start doing that. So dad was like, stop, 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 stop. He goes, listen to me. He goes, I want you. He goes, I'm trying, son, to teach you how to drive. He goes, I want you. I need you to listen to me. I want you to ease off the clutch. And um, so that last time I did. And all of a sudden, he goes, okay, put it in, put it in second. And I was uh, 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 trying to get it in. So he goes, use the clutch. I go, I already did. He goes, use it again. So I put it in, I put it in, and all of a sudden I go to the next gear. Uh, 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 trying to get grind, grinding gears. I think I left a transmission back, back a mile down the road, trying to learn how to drive. I'm just grinding gears. But before too long, I learned how to drive on that old stick shift Ford Courier. And, and here's what he would say. He goes, Chris, use the clutch. That's what it's there for. It's there for you to use to get the vehicle moving down the road. And so that's what the message is this morning, is that's what therefore is there for. So we've been doing our series about therefore, but here's what I want to tell you. I feel like I, as I was writing that word down, I was working on the message, here's what I want you to hear. Before we get into the message, I believe the Lord is saying that there's somebody here today, somebody may be watching online, you've been grinding the gears of your life. You've been trying to do it all by yourself and your finances, your marriage, it's grinding. It seems like it's work. You've been trying to get it together. You're trying to move. It's not working. It's not moving. Not only that, but you can't get the vehicle moving. You've been grinding those gears on your own. You've been trying, and whatever it is, finances, relationships, your job, your career, your whatever it is, you're grinding. And I'm going to tell you that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus came up clutch for us in the, in the middle of whatever is going on. And so therefore, for you to be able to propel the vehicle of your life down the road, God is saying, you just use the clutch. That's what it's there for. He is the one that causes us to move forward and propels us forward. So I don't know who that's for. And you just feel like you've been, man, I mean, everything I do, I'm, it's just grinding. I just want to take some time to pray this morning. Can we do that? Just take some time to pray for you. Which is just eyes right, right now. Just, just lift your hand. If that's if that's you feel like that's you, I'm not trying to embarrass you, but I'm just telling you, there is help. There's hope this morning. But yeah, I want to pray for you. Just lift your hands. Like I just feel like that's what it's been. All over the building. Lord, I just right now pray that you would help us to be able to get, Lord, this and move. Lord, and some people feel like they're stuck. I'm praying, Lord, that you you would indeed this morning help us to see you and high and lift it up. That's what it's about, Lord. It's about what, what you have done. So thank you, Lord, for the truth of your word. Thank you, Lord, that you help us. You are very present help in time of trouble. And then you, I hear the Lord saying this, where he says that cast all of your cares upon me because I care for you. And he also says, come to me, all ye that are heavy laden and burdened down, and I'll give you rest. Learn from me. Take upon my yoke because it's easy. My burden is light. So, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would help us, Lord, to, to really see the light, Lord. And I thank you for that and that you would break the yoke of the enemy off of our lives. And we thank you for who you are and what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 
you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. That's where our text is this morning. And where we're going to, where we're going to spend the majority of our time um, <clears throat> is in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And while you're turning there, just, just like my dad telling me that, hey, use the clutch, that's what it's there for. We've been in the series, and I want to wrap that up this morning because we're getting ready to go into another series and, um, and I'm ex- that I'm excited more about. But it's about, this, this is what this is about. What, what is it there for? Why are we even talking about that? This is the truth. Because of what Christ has done, because of what he has done in our lives, the price that he paid, therefore, the question is, how now shall we live? How do we live now that he has paid? We know that he's paid the price. What are we to do? You know, when they would say, when Jesus would preach the gospel, he'd preach a message, they would say, they were, or P- Paul would preach it, Peter, they would say, what must we do now? And he'd say, repent, change the way that you think, because the kingdom of heaven is at hand, so there's things for us to do. It's like, well, if you talk about that, there's a thin line because you're talking about works, but we're not, I'm not just trying to talk about works, but there are things to do. One of my, one of my good friends has told me, and I really believe this, he goes, it's hard for us it's hard for a believer to grow if they're not engaged in the Word of God. Do you believe that? How do you grow if you're not engaged in the Word? I just don't understand. I don't know. You, you, you're, you're talking about how, because the Bible says that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's what, I mean, it's, it's the truth. And so um, I got in a, in a little argument about, somebody's like, well, what about all this transgender stuff? I, I, can't, I can't go there with you because the Bible says that male and female, he created them. I can't, I can't go any other, because the word of God guides my life. And so, but, but you're saying, so you're, are you saying you're, an, you're anti-gay? Are you, anti, are you, are you a, hobo, a, a homophobe? Are, uh, listen, I am a child of God. I'm a son uh, of the kingdom, and I, but here's what I know. I know this, that I believe in what the Bible says. I believe that the Bible is the word of God. I believe, not only do I believe that it's the word of God, but I believe it's inerrant, and I believe that I can live my life by the word of God, not by everything every, everything else. And all the world is screaming, and, and, and CNN is coming after people, and, and all kind of stuff that's going on. But here's what I believe. When I live by the word of God and it's truth, it guides my life. And the Bible said that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. He delights in his way, and though he fall, he shall not utterly be cast down, because the Lord, the Lord, the Lord upholds him with with this hand. So I gotta live by the word of God. It's a, I don't know, I don't know, it's alive, it's active, it's, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. So you wanna get caught up in all this semantics and talking about this and, and trying to get me caught, I, I'm gonna always go back to the word. And if you didn't know, if you're here a guest this morning, we believe in the word of God in this church. I'm not going to come with just opinion. I'm going to come with the word of God in this church. We believe that it is the power of God. And Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but it's the power of God unto salvation. Well, what's what's going on with the country? Has it changed? Jesus is still the answer for the world today. The word of God is still the guiding principles of where we we live on. It's the foundation of where we live. So I don't know how how you grow without the word of God. Here's, here's what 2 Corinthians chapter 5, um, we're going to start at verse 11. It starts off with the word. Say it with me. Therefore, in knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others, but what we are is known to God, and I hope it is known also to your conscience. I'm reading out of the ESV. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you cause to boast about us, so that you may be able to answer those who boast about outward appearance and not about what is in the heart. That's what the world does. Verse 13, for if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it's for you. For the love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might not, may no longer live for themselves, but for him but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. All this is from God, 
who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against him and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us, we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Isn't that good news? Therefore, so there are five therefores in that passage. Count them, five. And I'm going to talk about them this morning. Um, what it says in 2 Corinthians um, 4, 16, the reason why it starts with therefore, you know, if you ever heard the pastor, our pastor say, our preacher say, Whenever you read the word therefore, you need to find out what it's, what it's there for. And so I'm going to just do a little review because in the preceding verses, uh, chapter 4, 16 through 5, chapter 5 through 10 is the message of the hope of the covenant. Here's what it says. He's, he's saying, don't lose hope. Uh, the outer self is wasting away. Don't, don't, don't lose hope. This earthly vessel, this earthly tent is being destroyed, but we have hope. Then he says, we walk by faith and not by sight. In the preceding verses, it talks about that, right? We walk by faith and not by sight. And then it says, how I many I mean, you know that this earthly tent is passing away? How I many you know that it's being destroyed? Every morning I wake up, I'm being reminded of some things that are passing away. Now, yesterday I went to my barber and she was like, you know, you keep coming here. You know I'm just taking your money from you, right? You have no hair and therefore I'm just stealing from you. I go, I know, but I have to look presentable for the camera. And she's like, well... I do the best I can, but you, what do you want? I said, I want to get up in the morning and just wipe it. You know, if somebody falls asleep, I want to be able to do that and wake them up and just glare at them. They sound like, oh, yeah, that's what I want. I want you to get that haircut. That'll cost you $30. $30 to cut two hairs? I don't understand it. But that's what it is. So, so, so I'm just telling you, so this every day, your tent, all this stuff, that, and I'm not saying don't exercise, I'm not saying don't run or don't whatever, because I know some people are like, you, you don't, you're against an, uh, exercising. I'm like, no, I'm not. You talk about food all the time. Yes, I do, because God made food, and it's good, and I love it. <laughs> Makes me feel good. I like it. I enjoy food. But anyway, but this earthly tent, you can do stuff to it, but it's still passing away. And so the earth, your tent groans for the day that is going to be put on the, the heavenly body that Christ has for us. But at the same time, this, those are the preceding verses. Then it goes, therefore, this is where I'm getting into today in verse 11. It starts talking about the fear of the Lord. Now, when you look up here, it says that. It says, it says, therefore, and you talk about the fear of the Lord. Listen, the church, the body of Christ, needs to return back to the fear of the Lord. That's not, a, that's not one of those, those good messages where it'd be like, oh, preach it, brother, because that's not one of those deals. We, like, we talk about the country returning back to the fear of the Lord, but the Bible says that judgment starts at the house of God. If we talk about judgment starts at the house of God, we have got to get back to the place where we are fearing God. Now, I'm not talking about the fear that I had as a kid where I was just like, oh, if I do wrong, he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna do something to me. Oh, my gosh. Well, the wages of sin is death. The Bible says that. You make this, these decisions, death will come upon you. But the truth is he paid for it. He took out all the wrath on his son, Jesus. Therefore, though, we need to turn back toward the fear of the Lord. And here's, here's, here's what it says. This is what Paul was motivated by the fear of the Lord. And, and this is, I got this from a friend of mine, Sam Storms. He said that this is, not, this is not the fear of being rejected by God, which Paul says in Romans 8, 1, because he said there's therefore now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus, right? He says that. But rather the absence that he's talking about, he's talking about the commending themselves to, to God, but not necessarily talking about the fact that he doesn't condemn us, but there is a fear, there's reverence of the one who is the judge. But the truth is, is that he's already, he's already judged all the sin, all of your sin was nailed to the cross with Jesus. Therefore, when he sees us, he sees us as the righteousness of God, right? And so that's, that's what us. And then he says this, the love of Christ controls us. Your Bible may say compels us. The love of Christ compels us. The love of Christ controls us. The, um, uh, here's, here's what that means. It literally means hemmed in. When it says the love of Christ, it says that I can't do anything else. Once you've been touched by the love of God, you, it, con it controls. You've been, the other, another word for it, if you look it up, it means that you've been apprehended by the love of God. You have been arrested by the love of God. Anybody ever been arrested? Don't raise your hand. I have. I've been arrested before. Don't raise your hand. Some of you are just like, I, I ain't going to tell nobody. But you, once you've been arrested by the love of God, you, you'll know it 
because the same thing is true when you've been arrested in the world. You have the right to remain silent. Why is that? You have a right to remain silent because if you are controlled by the love of God, then you don't, you can't get offended when somebody comes and says something. You can't get offended by the things that the world, that the world is going on. You've been arrested by, by God. When, you, when, you, when someone tries to come in and you see them, you've been compelled by his love, that when you see them, you are compelled to love that person as Christ loves you. Amen? And so, therefore, you, you've been apprehended by his love. The Bible says that his love, did you ever receive the love of the Father? When I first came to this church and Pastor Terry, you know, I'm young, I'm thinking about this, that's not, we, we, I don't know why we reminisce about some of the old days a lot, but we talk about the fact that when we first came in here and Pastor Terry was talking about the love of the Father, still talks about the love of the Father because he is a Father. And the truth is, is that I was like, I knew that, I know that, I know that message, Pastor Terry, I heard that message all my life. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but, uh, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus, I know that. I've sang that song my whole life. But I'm telling you, it had made the journey up here. I got it up here, but I did not have a revelation of it in here. Had not made it. And so, because when you are arrested by the love of God and you are compelled by his love, you, you've been apprehended by his love, it changes you. Do you understand what I'm telling you? It changes who you are. When I've been arrested, there was nothing I could do. When that guy put the handcuffs on me, I didn't, there was nothing I could do. All I could do was sit in the car. He says, you have a right to remain silent? You have a right to an attorney. Like, I don't even know any attorneys. I don't know anybody. And I was scared. I was like, man, I'm going to sit in the back of the seat. I was apprehended. I, there's nothing I can do. And I'm just telling you what, when you've been apprehended by the love of God, there's nothing you can do but see people the way he does and love people the way that he does. And if you're having trouble with love in your heart, the truth is, is that you have to ask yourself, have you been apprehended by his love? Have you been really, because you can't give away what you don't have. Amen? I, I remember in my, with my dad, we, we didn't have that relationship that I'm talking about right now. Where, where I didn't, I didn't crawl up in my dad's lap. I told you, I said that I didn't crawl up in his lap like, Dad, I just love you. You know, there was none of that going on. He wanted, he was, the, it was the John Wayne model. Hey, Pilgrim. He actually called me that sometimes. Hey, Pilgrim. I mean, you know, he, 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 he was you'd be tough. You know, I mean, I, I, we, we didn't play with dolls and different things like that. You know, we just, we just, that was just tough. He didn't, he didn't, he, didn't, you know, why? And I found out, but he couldn't give away what he didn't have because he didn't have a father. But then, all of a sudden, he got apprehended by the love of God. He started giving it away. I'm telling you what, ask yourself, have you been apprehended by the love of Jesus? Because you would know it. You would know. And so you're talking about, you're talking about the love of God, the love of God that, that's shed abroad in our hearts, the, the presence of God that's shed abroad in our hearts, and that's what causes us to love the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So that's, that's the truth that God has for us. And so the love of Christ compels us, it controls us. Number two, the next second one, therefore, he talks about the gospel, all have died, and, and he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him, but for him who was for their sake, died and was raised. Talking about the fact that Jesus gave his life, therefore, you're not living for yourself. I'm telling you, that's what's wrong with the, some of the things that are going on in the church today, because we're living for ourselves trying to do things for ourselves, Jesus gave himself for the church. And so therefore, God's called us to love and to live, live for him. That means I got to work for him? No, but once you realize the fact that he's died for us and he loved us, the gospel says, the gospel message is that he's changed us and he's taken us from glory to glory. And therefore, because he's changing us and taking us from glory to glory, that we're no, long, no longer living for ourselves. This is what Paul was saying when he said in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ, and, and I no longer I that live, but Christ that lives within me. And the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I'm no longer living this life for myself. But I also, it's not I that live, but Christ that lives within me. It's no longer I'm that living, but Christ that lives within me. That way, that means that I don't see things the way in the flesh. I don't see things the way the world does. I see things the way that I have kin kingdom lens, lenses on so that I can see you the way Christ does. Does that make sense to you? Be able to see through, through so why we need a biblical worldview so that we can look at things through the lens of Scripture. Because everybody else, they have an answer for everything. They got an answer for all these things. 
And so therefore, it's just saying this. And so the third, therefore, so we regard no one according to the flesh, even though one, once we regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him no, no longer. According to the flesh means by the world standards. I'm not, I'm not looking at you through the world standards. I'm looking at you the way God sees you. Here's, here's, a, here's a definition. The phrase according to the flesh means by the world standards. Race, social economic position, education, title, gender. The only thing in importance that Paul was saying was this, was this. Therefore, are you in Christ? And when I look at you, here's, it's not about gender, it's not about color, it's not about your social economic status. Here's the question, are you in Christ? Because if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. The old things have passed away and the new has come. So are you in Christ? When I see you, that's the question I'm asking you. I'm not trying to find out where you are socially. I'm not trying to find out your gender. I'm not trying to, I'm, I want to know, are you in Christ? Because that's what I want to see. Is there either you in or you're out? Are you in Christ? If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. The old things have passed away and behold, the new has come. So then he talks about the fact that we need to be therefore, therefore we need to see ourselves, see other people that way. Then he says, be reconciled to God. And here's what I mean by that. This is where it gets good. The world is trying to talk about, they're talking about reconciliation, talking about racial reconciliation. Can I tell you, I am tired of having foot washings where the white people have to wash the black people's feet and they try to find out racial reconciliation and they're trying to wash people's feet. Can I just tell you the black is not coming off? Do not, I don't need you to wash the feet. The black is, I'm gonna be black. You can wash my feet all you want to, but the black, I'm still gonna be black. And you understand what I'm saying? It's like, well, let's have a foot washing. I'm tired of foot washing. How about you see the other person the way Jesus sees them? How about you look at them the way that God sees them? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. It's like, but we're, we got to have racial, racial reconciliation and we've got to come together. Listen, you can't even be reconciled to me until you're first reconciled to God. Listen. We're trying to skip steps in this country. You can't, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to find out. It's like, well, let's just all, listen, they tried that. Michael Jackson, all of them got together. We are the world. We are the children. We are the ones to make it. No, there was one who died for the world. And so because he died, therefore stand in that place. And when I see you, I see you as in Christ, washed, sanctified, and the blood of Jesus has cleansed you, your brother and sister in Christ, because you're reconciled to God. Now you're trying to be, you're trying to be reconciled to me, but you can't even do that until you're reconciled to God. You can't skip that step. And so therefore, so I'm saying this this morning, Antifa, be reconciled to God. Black Lives Matter, be reconciled to God. Transgender, all of you, be reconciled to God. Because if you can't be reconciled to God, forget about trying to be reconciled to me because it doesn't work. But, but you should want that. I do. I want that. But the truth is, is you've got to see the truth that God was reconciling all to himself. Jesus was reconciling all to himself. So therefore, be reconciled to God. I'm saying this to all my, my Caucasian pastor friends because I had one of them say that to me this week. They go, Chris, you can say that kind of stuff because you're black and therefore you can say whatever it is that you want to say. I'm going to say to you that are watching, stand up during this time. Stand up and take a stance. On don't, don't sit there and go the world's way. Don't you be silent about this, what's going on in the country, what's going on in our churches, what's going on in our neighborhoods, what's going on in our city. You stand up against racism, but you stand up and say what the scripture says. The truth is, is they gotta be reconciled to God. And we are in the ministry of reconciliation. That's your ministry. What's my ministry? Is that you're reconciling people to God. You're telling people, that's what Paul did. There's so many scriptures where he was, he was bringing people out of darkness and telling them about Jesus, but you gotta be reconciled to God. I'm going, we're gonna talk about that in this church. I'm not gonna be quiet. I'm not gonna stay silent about this stuff. The church has gotta stand up and take her rightful place in the kingdom of God. We gotta stand up against, because I'm telling you, this is our, grand, our children, our grandkids, this is a, a future. And so therefore, the church has been silent way too long. And so therefore, we gotta speak 
out against this stuff. Yes, they're talking about all that. I'm telling you, you could say, well, if I say that, I'll be ostracized. Well, Jesus talked about it. He dealt extensively with it. He talked about the fact that the, the woman at the well, it's like, how is it that you a Jew and talking to me a sir? What? Hey, whoa, that's not how that works. He goes, if you knew who it was that asked you for a drink, you wouldn't be talking about water that you're talking about, but you would ask me for a drink. And the water that I give you would be a wellspring and it'd be an everlasting life. So you're talking about the wrong stuff. That's why I love when people start talking to you about, it's about transgender, it's about homosexuality, it's about all this stuff. It's like, no, you're talking about the wrong stuff. You need to be talking about not the wrong stuff, but the right one. His name is Jesus. You need to be reconciled to God. I'm not talking about, I don't see you that way. I see you as either you're in Christ or not in Christ. Christ. And if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All that other stuff has passed away, and the new has come. I'm not going to get wrapped up in your ideology. I'm not going to get wrapped up in all this stuff. I had some, some, some friends, I'm telling you, some friends of mine that were homosexuals, and they said to me, they go, if we came to your church, Pastor Chris, would we make the holy water boil? That's a true story. My wife was sitting right there. And this is what I said to him. I said, first of all, we don't have any holy water in our church. <laughs> If you find some holy water, let me know. But I know about some water that comes from the throne that brings, is a river, actually, that comes from the throne and it brings life to everything that it touches. And the Bible says that out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water. And so therefore, that if you talk about that water, we do have that, but you can't make that water boil because the truth is, is that I've been to that water and that water comes out of me because there's a river of life flowing out of me and makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. I'll take y'all back this morning. An open prison door sets the captives free. I've got a river of life spring up oh well spring up oh well and make me whole see that's what the world needs is the well springing up I want people falling in that well. Be like, where y'all at? I'm down here. Where's that well? That's right. There's life coming up out of that well. There's water coming up out of that well. And then everybody that gets near you gets drenched with the power of the Holy Spirit because there's a power, there's a well, there's a spirit of God. And the Bible says it's the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead that lives in us and quickens our mortal bodies. That's the spirit that I'm coming out of. That's the spirit that I'm operating out of. I'm not operating out of the world, the, the spirit of the world. I'm not operating out of, out of a spirit of controversy. I'm acting out of a spirit of love because when I see you, I see you the way Christ does. And he said that out of that, when he saw them, they were scattered like a shepherd, like a sheep that didn't have a shepherd. And he was moved with compassion. Do you know the reason why he was moved with compassion? Because the father was moved with compassion. How do you know? Because Jesus only did what he saw the father doing and he only said what he heard the Father saying. So therefore, therefore, be reconciled to God. I don't care what you identify as. We were talking about this this morning. I want to identify as a rich person, but I, it just doesn't work for me. I can identify all I want to, <laughs> but it just doesn't work. I'd be like, look at my wallet this morning. It, I, it, it didn't identify with what I was trying to identify with. <laughs> can I get a witness? Anybody know what I'm talking about? You don't gotta, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't gotta wave at me, but wink at me if you know what I'm talking about. Just wink at me. Yes, I see, I see that wink. I see that wink. That's God is moving. That's what I'm talking about. That revival is happening right now. People walking in the truth. I see that wink. But in a world where you're trying to identify, where they're trying to identify is everything. Is all kinds of stuff. you can identify whatever you want to identify as. I mean, I wish that would work. That would have worked back in the day. I mean, I mean, so so all this stuff is going on. See, so this is changing. I'm trying to, I'm telling you, I'm just, just trying to change the, the, what the word of God is saying. Who do you identify with? What do you identify with? I'm going to tell you, I identify with Christ, and I'm preach Christ and him crucified. And therefore, that, 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 that message, because we are in the ministry of reconciliation, we are not only the ministry, but there's a message of reconciliation. And then therefore, the last therefore, is that we are ambassadors of the kingdom. You understand what an ambassador is? An ambassador who goes into another country has the same power as a person who sent them. You have been sent to be ambassadors in this season, in this time, right now, what's going on? Ambassadors. When I worked at Delta Airlines, we had those people that we call 
they were called uh, Delta representatives, and they put on the red coats. They had red coats that they put on. And, and so they, that red coat symbolized the fact that they had authority, the same authority. They could change your ticket. They could upgrade you to first class. That's when we really liked them. They could kick you off a plane. They could, they could change a flight. They could move a plane over. Whatever they needed to do to get that plane out on time, that, that coat, that red coat symbolizes the fact that they had power to do that. Now, I want to tell you this morning, you don't have a red coat, but you've been covered in the blood of Jesus. You've been covered. You've been washed in the blood of Jesus. And therefore, you have authority. You have power. The Bible says, behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all, everybody say it with me, all the power of the enemy. And so therefore, we can go out. We've been sent. You have that authority. We have to go out and be sent, but be you, that sent, not only are you sent, but you have a scent, S-C-E-N-T. The aroma of Christ goes with you. People smell that. Amen? They smell the scent. It's like, there's something different about you. There's something going on with you. Why do you have peace? And then, do, you know, do you see what's going on? Did you watch CNN? Did you watch all the news? You must not have seen the news. There's reason to panic. No, there's not. Because the Bible says, why, in Psalms 2, why do these nations plot and imagine vain things? Why do they set their, their, their armies in array against the one? He who sits in the heavens shall laugh because his anointed one is on the throne. Ever since I was 19 years old, I helped come here and is still here today. Last time I checked, finish it. Jesus is still on the throne. He's on the throne. And therefore, when he, if, I, if he's on the throne, then therefore I know it's all going to be good. He's working together, all things together for the good of those that love him and are called according to his purpose. Do you understand that? Because that's what he's doing. Therefore, we can be ambassadors. We can go do our job. We can do roll up your sleeve. Those of you just said, I just got, I just, I mean, I came into the kingdom for such a time as this because I know he's coming back. I know Jesus is coming back. He is coming back. But I want to tell you this. He's coming back. He's coming back for a spotless bride. He's coming back. For he is coming back for a spotless bride, and he's not coming back for a dirty bride. You know he's not coming back for a dirty bride. Uh, I was looking at some photos of, uh, of, of my wife. I'm just, I'm telling you, she sparkled. She made me look good. I'm telling you, that suit, that old suit that, that, that I got, at, at, anyway. And anyway, so she, I saw her dress. It was, it's supposed to be like an expensive suit. My wife is a bargain shopper. She got that suit, and it was supposed to be a $750 suit. I think she got it for like 70 bucks, you know what I'm saying? But I look good, but it don't know about that. It was about looking at her. Oh, man, she had them flowers in her hand, and she came down that aisle. All, everything else just faded away because I'm like, man, I'm looking at this woman, and she's going to change my life forever. So you guys don't know this, but I used to be white and skinny, and she had changed my life forever. You don't, y'all don't know that. She changed my life. Y'all didn't know that. I used to be, a, yeah, y'all, you, cra you crazy? I used to be Greg, you know what I'm saying? I used to be white and skinny. She changed my life. I'm, she did this to me. I'm just telling you right now. We're working. We had to work. I'm telling you, boy, I'm telling you. It's good. So the truth is, is that everything faded away because I saw her in a different light. So I'm telling you, once you see him, therefore you can go do what God's called you to do. But first, you got to be reconciled to God, reconciled to who he is, bringing him to the forefront. You may be here this morning and you're away from God. You don't know him or you're not, you don't, you don't necessarily, I just spilled water all over everything. Well, I'm going to need a new iPad. No, I'm not really. I'm just kidding. But the truth is, is that you, you may be here this morning. You need, you just need, you need to know him. You can know him this morning. You can be reconciled to God. You're watching this morning. You can be reconciled to God. You can come out of darkness and into his light. You can come out of that place where you're in. Some of you may just be struggling in your life. You got things that are going on. I want to tell you that God is in, he's here. He's, he's omnipresent. And you can, you can come to know the saving power of Christ. Therefore, the fear of the Lord, I'm telling you, the Bible says at the beginning, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It says that. The Bible talks about, and then therefore, the gospel, that he died, then all died in him. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. The other, another translation says he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The love of Christ compels us. Are you motivated by the love of Christ? It compels us. It brings us. I can't help it. I'm telling you what, I'm just, I guess, pause it just for a minute. I'm telling you what, I, I just see heaven doing this. When you, when you came out of darkness into his marvelous light, I can see this. Heaven's like, we got him. He can't go anywhere. 
Yes, he's been arrested. He's been apprehended. <sighs> he tried to run, but hey, we had we we knew all along because we put an APB out on him. <sighs> yes, he can't go anywhere. <sighs> yes, he, we read him his rights. He has a right to remain silent, and anything he says or does will not be used against him, but it'll be used to bring people out of darkness and into the marvelous light. It'll be used to bring people out of that place of misery into the kingdom of God. <sighs> it'll be used to bring people out of that place that they were in, and therefore he's compelled by love. <sighs> yes, he has a right to a attorney. His name is Jesus. He already fought for him. He's already said that he's won. He's already taken it. <sighs> yes, we have him. He can't go anywhere. He's compelled by the love of Christ. <sighs> yes, he's in the car right now. We have him. He can't go anywhere else. He's he's come. He's apprehended, compelled by the love of Christ. <sighs> yes, no, let him go. Yeah, what do you mean let him go? <sighs> he can't go anywhere else because God is constraining him and her and therefore they can't go anywhere except for to bring people out of darkness and into his marvelous light. That's what the kingdom of God is saying about you. Do you understand the rights that you've been read this morning? If you understand those rights, I want you to stand. I'm going to pray for you. The last, therefore, therefore, we are ambassadors of Christ, being controlled, being compelled by his love. And therefore, that's what he's called us to what is my ministry? Here's your ministry, the ministry of reconciliation. Because God, Christ was in God, reconciling the world to himself. Somebody asked me this week, they were talking about Pastor Terry and I, and the fact that they said, do you, do you believe that Pastor Terry felt sorry for you because you were black and therefore you didn't, you didn't know, he didn't know. He's like, I'm trying to do something for somebody and help them, you know, because I go, no, he didn't see me that way. Never once did he ever, and ever mention color, race, anything. This is the first question he ever asked me. Ever asked me. I never forget it. We were moving his daughter, uh, Meredith, into her, into her house, and I got in the car. He said, Chris, what is the message that's in your heart? What do you have in your heart to do? Now, he didn't say, well, where'd you come from? Tell me about your social, economic, you know, where'd you come from? Where you? He wanted to know what the message that God had put in my heart. So he didn't see me as anything except for, are you in Christ or are you not in Christ? Because if you're in Christ, all the other stuff doesn't matter <laughs> because that's passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So that's why. We're still doing ministry together, still going to, going to continue to do ministry together. But he didn't see me that way. He wasn't trying to figure out, all right, now. I mean, he, I mean, I, I, it, looked, it looked like it, though. Doesn't it look like right when it came, all the Antifa, all the riots, all the stuff. It looked like he just like, hmm, you know what? I'm going to let you. Then, you know, it, look, it looked good. Well, it looked, it looked good on paper. It looked good on paper. It's like somebody called, called, called Pastor and said, hey, you better get out while you can. I'm telling you right now, it's going to be some social unrest. You better get you a black guy. Get him in there real good and make church look good. There was none of that. As a man and a woman who was led by the Spirit. And therefore, they said, hey, it's time. And so, therefore, that's why I'm here. And so, that I'm saying that this ship is sailing. And they, and they know this because I, I like big boats. I, I can't lie about that. I love big boats. <laughs> But this ship is moving, it's sailing. Are you on board? Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you for your goodness and your mercy. I thank you, Lord, for all that you have in store. We are ambassadors. Help us to see ourselves as that way. Help us to see, Lord, that you're taking us from glory to glory. We are moving, Lord, with you. We don't want to do anything apart from your will. We don't want to do anything apart from your ways. And you are helping us to be those ambassadors. So I, Lord, as we go out, Lord, help us to see people the way you do. We are controlled. We are compelled. We are arrested. We are apprehended by the message of the cross, the message of the kingdom. So thank you, Lord, for loving us for such a time as this. We're compelled by your love. Some of you may need the love of the Father right now. Fresh revelation. Lord, I pray that you do it. Just overwhelm them with the love of who you are. And we thank you for that. And we love you and bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.